Hello everyone, we are live with a new episode of the Security Break podcast. I I, I hope we're live actually, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> no, I checked, I checked, I, I'm sure we're live ah, and okay. uh, so we should be, we should be okay to go. Great. So um, let's just start, let's say. Uh, so, uh, you know, if this is the first time you uh, watch uh, the Security Bread po- podcast, it's just basically um, an excuse to have a, a discussion with uh, some people from the security industry, uh, read some uh, recent security news and, uh, uh, you know, uh, exchange some uh, thoughts and uh, opinions and, uh, you know, uh, learn something in the process and hopefully uh, watching this, you will learn something as well. Um, today with me, we have Davide Meloni. Hi, Davide, and thank you Hello, for everybody. joining me. So thank I you. will, uh, let's say, I will... Um, uh, just a second. So uh, we... Uh, we have Davide with us today, right? And uh, Davide is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, a long. Uh, <laughs> um, he's in the industry from a long time, quite a long. I will not say it just because uh, I don't want you to feel uh, too old. Um, and um, yeah, you just you are working for a pharmaceutical company right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct. And uh, yeah, you were involved in uh, multiple. Uh, Nonprofit organizations uh, in uh, specifically in Italy, right, uh, related to yeah, the yeah. security field, and uh, yeah, we we uh, we actually meet each other quite some years ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> n- not sure, not sure how long, but yeah, I'm just it I'm just very happy. Two thousand seventeen should be seriously. Mm, yeah. Whoa! No, that's too much. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's <laughs> let's say that it's less than that. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, I just I just you know uh, thank you very much for for joining me uh, for for this uh, fifth episode. And uh, yeah, I think. Do you have anything um, that you want to say just before we start, or just thank you for asking me to join you in this new adventures uh, it is the first time uh, for me to um, participate in this such a, um, uh, such a program let's say uh, so okay. i'm curious to see how it will go yeah that, that's great this is the basically the start of the podcast in general so you're let's say that you are a beta tester <laughs> how does it feel <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. So as every time, uh, I, I actually just remind you know uh, any anyone that is uh, watching us today that we are live on Twitch, but this episode will will also be uploaded on uh, YouTube um, later. Uh, I think uh, next week probably. Uh, and uh, this is the same for all of the previous and next next episode that uh, we did and will do. So if uh, you didn't already, uh, actually, you know, have a look at our uh, YouTube channel that I think I can actually, yeah, I can show the link uh, right there. Uh, so have a look at that. And uh, maybe uh, if, if you think that this is, this is interesting, just um, subscribe and, uh, uh, you know, keep in touch for the next episode. Cool. So I think that's all, and we can start with the with the good stuff. And yeah. uh, as uh, as we we always do, we basically selected um, a bunch of uh, security news, right? That we thought uh, were interesting from the last week. And um, I'm going to share my screen right now. Yeah. So that anyone should be able to. Uh, you know, not to read it because maybe it's good if you um, uh, read it on your own, but at least you can follow us um, while while we, we discuss on it. So I just wanted to um, share the link in the chat, but I think I'll do that uh, another time. Cool. So um, just a little introduction for the news. 
So apparently, uh, um, uh, this first news talks about a um, um, threat group that is called Anonymous Sudan, uh, which allegedly, you know, um, um, breached Microsoft, or at least that's what they say, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they they actually, yeah, this is the um, the post they did on their Telegram group, where they announced we hacked Microsoft and we have access to a database uh, for 30 million Microsoft accounts, whatever that means, by the way, because at least for me, it's not really clear what that means specifically, but it appears they have access to some uh, uh, emails and passwords. Maybe they, they uh, actually mean, uh, you know, username, possibly and passwords. Not sure if that's just credentials or they actually, uh, you know, uh, are saying that they have access to any other kind of content, right? Actually, you know, uh, email messages that were shared between these uh, accounts or anything else is just not clear. Um, the point is that Microsoft says that is not really true and that they have, you know, of course, uh, many companies uh, say that after a breach, but they say they have no clue of the, any evidence of uh, um, uh, this, uh, this data breach. Even if the group, I think, actually shared also like a sample, I think it's written somewhere. Yeah, it's a sample of, of uh, uh, 100... Mm. Uh, emails addressed with passwords, but uh, without any other details uh, about yeah. this. Uh, yeah, and, and this is the first uh, things that uh, make uh, uh, the thing, uh, the news, uh, not so clear. Trustworthy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 So I think I think that's already. A first and very interesting topic, uh, starting from the news, news, right? This is not the first time I read about something else, and I believe that's that's going to be the same for you, Davide. The point is that um, <clears throat> you know uh, it's it's very common today that a threat group uh, try to breach an organization, try to steal data, try to exfiltrate that data, and then uh, you know uh, 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 basically um, treat and uh, the organization to sell the data online or to just publish the data online. Um, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, uh, the organization has to pay something, you know, to prevent it. Yes. Um, um, what yep. also is strange uh, uh, on this is that, come on, you have breached Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that you do is, uh, is a post on Telegram, on your Telegram channel. Yeah, you, you feel like it's not enough, right? <laughs> no. They, they should flex this a little, a little more. <laughs> my, my, probably Microsoft uh, is um, one of the, is probably the first uh, company that uh, every hacker would like to, to hack. I mean, yeah, just yeah. because it's, it's, it's a Microsoft. big, it's a big target. Yeah, it's a big target, <laughs> yeah. let's say. So if you are able to, to breach uh, Microsoft, uh, probably uh yeah you will be you are, little... you are not doing only a, a post on your on your telegram channel you are doing yeah. much more noise in the community in the, in, in the dark and so on yeah my opinion no 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 i i actually agree but i think there's more i think that you know we have to do different things you know uh, uh the attackers can try to sell the data online like this group is doing. I think they asked for $50,000, right? You can see that here, uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to the public, basically. Uh, and that's, that's fair, I would say. But the point is that if you are breaching a big company like Microsoft and uh, a company that does a lot of money, of course, maybe you will prefer also to ask a ransom, right? To ask directly Microsoft, the money maybe much more modern money than that in order to prevent the, the publication of the data. I really feel that this amount of data is not that much again, considering that we are talking about micro Microsoft. And uh, that makes me also think that you know maybe this is uh, just a, a, you know a, a scam of some kind, right? 
um, someone goes and pay 50,000 just because, okay, this is Microsoft data. So there's going to be uh, something, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> something juicy in there. <laughs> and, uh, and they actually have nothing. Or they just give you some some data that is not really. Yes, um, probably they are trying to get this fifty thousand US dollar from Microsoft directly, <laughs> just to know if if this data are really from them or not. Probably. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is true. You know, it happens that uh, you know the company wants to confirm right the, yeah. the validity of the data and uh, as actually to to pay for it. Or at least to maybe um, negotiate with the attackers to maybe to, to pay a little less um, uh, uh, compared to, to what they're asking for. But I really think that at this point, Microsoft is very strict saying that, no, we, we don't have any evidence, right? We don't see any um, you know, activity uh, internally that make us think that uh, this data was exfiltrated. At least you know, 30 million Microsoft accounts is a big database. So you definitely can see that if you are monitoring your environment, right? And I really hope yeah. that Microsoft is. <laughs> That's probably. But, you know. you see, if someone is able to empty your house, probably <laughs> you will notice it before. Yeah. <laughs> OK. You no, know, maybe not before. It's not, you know, uh, let's, let's just not take as granted that you are able to see that before it's too late. But, you know, at, at least <laughs> when it's too late, uh, you will have any evidence, right? You will see that there was a um, exfiltration of, I don't know how many uh, gigabytes of, of file, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, it's something that you will see, you will, uh, you will find any evidence. That, that's part of the, you know, uh, uh, they call it post-mortem investigation, right? After you actually had an incident in your, in your environment, you have to understand exactly how they, the attacker uh, got into your environment, uh, if they exploited a vulnerability or maybe they, I don't know, uh, sent a phishing email or something. Uh, and that's, um, that's required most of the time because first you want to understand how big is the damage, right? That, you, um, that was caused by the attackers. And uh, uh, secondly, because uh, you want to prevent that in the future. Right, to prevent that someone else is going to exploit the same vulnerability or to you know uh, um, get in your in your environment in the same exact way as these attacker these attackers did you know it's the how do they call it um, uh, lesson learned part of the incident response process uh, so I really think Microsoft is able to do that is gonna do that and uh, if they really not have any any clue uh, I, I you know <laughs> I will trust Microsoft more than, uh, let's say, a, a random uh, trade group, right? Yeah, even because um, I read uh, somewhere on the internet that uh, mm -hmm. uh, Anonymous Sudan uh, was around since January of, of this year. So it's not uh, an historical uh, APT groups uh, with... Yeah. Uh, um, which is famous for its attacks uh, or so on. Yeah. Uh, so also this is uh, this is strange. Uh, even if someone uh, connected uh, to the Russian uh, Kilnet group, mm -hmm. I mean, someone that uh, since uh, before six months ago, it doesn't exist. was not there. Yeah, 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 it was not there. Uh, that claims to have breached Microsoft uh, with only uh, a post uh, on the Telegram channels. Uh, seems not true, really. <laughs> seems okay. not true. Yeah. To me. Actually, I have, you said something interesting, and I have a question for you. Do you feel like, um, like threat groups have... Uh, I can say this, mm, like a reputation, and uh, they they uh, they can actually exploit it. So let me do an example here. Mm -hmm. If this was done by another threat group that was, you know, uh, more famous or that did a list of uh, um, 
successful attacks in the past, right? Mm -hmm. um, a claim like this, still with just a post on Telegram, will be more trustworthy just because of that threat group is more more famous than this one. What what would you say? In my opinion, at least uh, we have to take the news more seriously than than this. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, uh, uh, as you said, the groups, uh, the hypothetical uh, group uh, is more famous, has already done uh, uh, a bunch of uh, successful attacks, uh, mm -hmm. have shared some of their uh, leak uh, somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, the story will be different uh, in this case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and I also think that probably the the news itself would have spread a lot more than this, right? If I don't know who is who is uh, very big uh, nowadays, uh, uh, Killnet itself or another big group, right? Claim something like this, we would have seen many, uh, many more um, websites talking about this and probably Microsoft would have uh, also um, uh, stronger, um, you know, defended itself, uh, uh, you know, publicly, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think yeah. like there's nothing to defend here that like in my point of view, the, the news itself right here is not really um, credible. Like not the news, but the the claim from the from the attackers, yeah. uh, but from someone else, I feel like there would have been much more pressure on Microsoft itself, right, uh, to demonstrate that uh, actually the data was safe, that no attacks were uh, were involved, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, I feel that uh, it's uh, it's not a um, it's not a good point, right? If attackers can exploit their reputation, it, that, that's a, um, an, an advantage for them, right? So mm -hmm. if, if someone had a lot of successful attacks in the past, they can just you know scam people because they have credibility, right? That scares me. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> th that's more power without actually having to do any technical stuff. Just because, oh, you know, I did this in the past, so I can do this again. I can breach Microsoft, Apple, or any other kind of company, and the people will believe me. I don't know. That's that's tough. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, probably in uh, in such a situation, there's uh, uh, also uh, some bluff around <laughs> on, the, yeah. on the news uh, and the topic uh, the, the case here uh, could be of two of two types uh, the first uh, is that uh, there's no so much noise around on this topic uh, uh, because uh, the groups uh, is almost uh, Anonymous, <laughs> not known uh, in uh, the community, and uh, the news is true, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, because uh, mm, the 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 story is totally is totally false. So, but there's yeah. really. Uh, very few details around uh, to yeah to have an opinion right yeah 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 uh, the other interesting uh, things on this news is that uh, seems that uh, the same groups uh, attack, uh, attacked uh, microsoft late uh, in the late of june of this year with a layer 7 ddos attack uh, and right. uh, and, uh, and probably th this is the the only um, serious uh, piece element of, uh, of this. Of, yeah, yeah. Because uh, as you know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, DDoS uh, attacks are used 
to cover some other types of attacks against right. uh, the target just to uh, because uh, into the the noise of the DDoS attack, uh, all your other attacks uh, may be um, uncovered, let's say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and and this, so is, actually, uh, the, this is the, the only detail that uh, uh, give a bit give of some trust, value uh, yeah, to, yeah. to this news. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. So let's just do maybe a little st step back just to explain what we are talking about, right? Because I forgot to, to mention this. Basically, this, um, this claim by these attackers uh, was published. Um, I don't know if that's during or just after Microsoft faced an actual attack, like a, a, an actual DDoS attack that um, gave them some issues with their cloud, I think, uh, cloud services, right? And um, the point is that this group said, okay, we are behind this attack and, you know, we use this to disguise the actual exfiltration of data, right? So this is what uh, what you were referring to, right? Um, and, uh, and I agree with you. Uh, you know, um, the fact that possibly two different events were going on at the same time, maybe this group was not really behind the DDoS attack, right? But someone was mm -hmm. doing, and someone else is just, you know, um, taking the, the opportunity uh, to um, uh, to basically uh, scam people on, on uh, one side and also, um, uh, you know, at least give some uh, uh, image damage to, to Microsoft, right? Uh, it's, it's basically the perfect time for them to do this. But again, there are no clues. Uh, Microsoft is not sharing anything. Uh, the group is not sharing anything, and we have no information about you know this actually happening. Uh, so still, maybe they just took the the best time to do this, but it's not it's not really the case. Or at least you know again, uh, we really need some uh, uh, some some clues to um, to determine this. And uh, I think the like long story short. What we could, what we can take from a news like this, is just that uh, we should not trust threat groups, right? We we should remember uh, that they are still good. criminals, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so whatever they say, and I will also add, no matter the reputation of the threat group, right, is not someone to trust, because we are talking no. about still criminals. We are talking about people who are just. Uh, finding an illegal way to make money, okay? So it's not like uh, whatever they say or whatever they post online, uh, it, it happened for sure. And also, maybe one last thing is that I think it happened before that maybe uh, there was an actual incident, there was an actual exfiltration, but um, the organization that the threat group is uh, mentioning is not the actual one they breached. I don't know if you remember, but it happened before that, I don't know, threat group X says, okay, I breached the, this organization and I'm, I'm uh, selling this uh, data. But the actual organization was one with, the, with a very similar name, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, either they are lying or they are not really trustworthy. Like it's not a, a credible, you know, uh, business or something <laughs> so let's always let's say double check before uh, blindly trusting anything that they um, uh, they mention right cool so um sorry my little what? one <laughs> i've had oh, a say, question for me <laughs> <laughs> say hi to her from us <laughs> um Great. So, do you think there's there's anything else about this news that we didn't mention that could be interesting, or uh, should that be enough? Oh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of speculations about uh, um, the um, uh, the Russian uh, or the theory that Russian is behind uh, these uh, right. these new groups. Uh, uh, something that uh, it's like uh, seems like uh, this uh, anonymous Sudan. It's a way 
to um, cover trucks uh, from Russian groups, uh, mm-hmm. um, trying to use uh, the Islamist ideologies uh, and so on. But uh, um, th- these are really also confusing. Only, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, confusing and probably also only speculation on on the uh, attribution of that of this uh, of this attack these groups uh, again something that uh, um, we cannot prove yeah again so and uh, and i think that's uh, unfortunately that's pretty common in uh, attribution in general right when we talk about attribution we're uh, referring to the um activity to track down a group and try to understand who's behind right the group itself if Absolutely. there's a, a state or if just uh cyber criminals if they have um you know uh any sponsorship or anything right but the point is that it's a very very difficult topic and um, you know you know I, I don't do this i don't do this uh like for work Uh, and I just think it's very difficult and uh, uh, a big part of it is speculation, right? Because you never know, even if you have some clues, you never know if uh, that's, uh, those are made up clues, right? What if uh, an, an attacker wants to, um, uh, let's say, disguise as uh, someone else? What if they put on purpose some, uh, I don't know, purpo- uh, uh, you know, uh, Russian uh, words here and there or Chinese um, uh, fonts here and there just to make you think they are from China and, and actually it's, it's another state, uh, another state, right? It's, it's a very yeah. difficult activity and uh, yeah, again, just, uh, just, you know, I will say not trust that uh, every time you read something especially if, if again if that, that is uh, the threat group itself that is declaring something like okay i'm uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm associated with russia okay maybe <laughs> maybe you know yeah. just don't trust them i agree attribution probably is the most complicated part of all uh, the uh, of all the job because uh, even when you are able to um uh, um to look at uh, or read at uh, some piece of codes uh, that mm-hmm. contains uh, comments uh, in uh, foreign uh, languages uh, like uh, as you said chinese russian so on or uh, you you cannot say this piece of software belong to this to this group because even yeah. in in the in the threat actor uh, world, there are uh, um, there are leak of uh, of software, uh, yeah, and exchange of software te- uh, techniques uh, and so on uh, that uh, make it difficult, prob- right? Yeah, make it difficult, and, and probably. Uh, this will not surprise me if they, uh, the threat groups uh, are exchanging some pieces of codes mm. j- just to confuse the, uh, the, the, def- the blue team, let's say. Yeah. yeah, either they are exchanging it or they are stealing stuff between each yeah. other. Oh. Oh. <laughs> probably stealing. <laughs> It's more probable than, than exchange, but... Yeah. Uh, but still, you know, there are so many different aspects that make this very difficult. And uh, just reusing software from someone else, maybe it's a legitimate software that is being modified to be used uh, with malicious purposes. And you never know if, if, you know, the clues that you are looking at are from the legitimate organization that first developed the software or is actually from the threat group itself, right? So there are just too many aspects uh, about this. But I'll just stop you here because I think yeah, yeah. that's going to be enough for this news. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's the, uh, the best moment to, to uh, move on with the next one, yeah. uh, which 
just you know again take a moment to introduce this talks about uh, one of the largest sports in Japan. Uh, this is very big in 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 any you know <laughs> uh, in any aspect. The, the the port is big and also the, the news is uh, big as well. Uh, so basically, this uh, this port that is called oh here here there is so the port of Nagoya um, was was hit by a ransomware attack. So let's remember that a ransomware is basically a, a malware where the attackers are encrypting data and making the uh, sys systems unavailable for the organization itself that has to interrupt you know, all of the uh, business processes in order to um, you know, recover from, from the attack. And it's called ransomware because the attackers are actually asking for a ransom in order to um, um, you know, uh, give the organization the keys to unencrypt uh, the files and the systems that were affected. And in this case, the ransomware actually blocked all of the um, um, you know, processes for a specific software they are using in the port to, uh, to manage the uh, containers uh, shipments, right? And for that reason, uh, like the, the news doesn't say if and when they, they recover it uh, you know, to, to work properly, but they definitely stayed... Um, uh, for, for a long time, unable to actually ship anything from, uh, from the port. And being this one of the biggest one in uh, Japan, I think, yeah, he, he, here there is also specified that Toyota, like the, the, the car company, also used this uh, to export their cars all over the world. So you can definitely tell that this is a, a, a very big, you know, uh, um, uh, you know economic damage for the company itself and all of the um, maybe customers that are also using this as a uh, as a way to export uh, goods for from uh, from Japan, right? So again, there are um, multiple things that are interesting about this uh, this piece of news. First one, okay, uh, we hear talking about ransomware a lot nowadays, but when something like this like an organization like this is hit, hit uh, that, you know, has actually some uh, uh, physical repercussion, okay? It's not like just the, the digital part of the company is blocked. Actually, you are stopping ships to, um, uh, you know, uh, to travel around the world, basically, right? And mm -hmm. uh, um, to, uh, to move and export uh, goods and stuff uh, from uh, from and between countries, so you can see once again how big could be uh, uh, the result of a, of a cyber attack, right? That maybe it's still not really clear for for many people out there. And uh, um, um, yep. there's there's another there's another point uh, here uh, about uh, the the damage uh, and. Let me say that uh, we, we, uh, the Japanese uh, people, mm -hmm. would be uh, was was lucky that uh, this uh, was only a ransomware attack, because mm. uh, uh, I mean in the port there are for sure a lot of uh, automation, industrial automation, uh, right, that. Uh, could uh, impact uh, human uh, human lives. Right. Imagine imagine uh, something that is uh, um, that is controlled by uh, an a PLC mm -hmm. that is attacked and that uh, uh, can uh, um, be of harm to the life. Right. I mean, in this case, we have had only only a ransomware yeah. attack that that caused <laughs> loss of money uh, for sure. Uh, someone probably uh, wasn't able to find uh, its uh, favorite products uh, <laughs> at the goods uh, in uh, for two days, uh, but uh, that's all. No so, um, uh, impacted. Yeah, and so and, I have. Uh, 
and this is something that I um, uh, I learned to think at uh, uh, only uh, since the, since two thousand and twenty two when I started uh, working in the pharmaceutical uh, industry. Right. Because in banking you do not think to to libs. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right. but 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 when when you have uh, when you have um, industrial uh, industrial system uh, in your in your network that can uh, impact uh, uh, life, uh, then uh, you have to try to make. Uh, to, to take it uh, well present to to your mind, uh, let's say. <laughs> sure. No, it's it's a game changer, right? It changes like, um, you know, the the um, how can I say this? Like, what is involved, you know, uh, as a as a result of an attack. So, as you said, one thing is that uh, we are just losing money as a company, and of course it. That, that's bad for the company itself, maybe also for the people who are employees of the same company. But at the same time, if maybe I'll, I'll make just a more specific example here, right? Uh, we for sure have machines in a port that are physically moving the, the containers, right? Uh, from, yeah. uh, um, you know, from and to the ships. Mm -hmm. And these will be possibly remotely controlled by a computer uh, and uh, pro probably through a PLC, as you said, it's basically just a, um, how can we say this, uh, a programmable um, system that enables communication between, you know, uh, computers and, uh, and physical machines, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. uh, maybe robots in, in some, uh, in some uh, scenarios. Maybe if you are assembling something in, in an industry or something. The fact that you have that physical machine that can move around, right? And is also moving very heavy um, payloads, right? Yeah. Th that, that's what can, can actually impact human lives, right? Because mm -hmm. if there are operators, if there are people around the machine itself and the machine loses control, right, of the, um, of the payload that is carrying and uh, I don't know, that payload will fall yeah. on top of someone. That's the very if the worst machine part re that... release the container when the yeah. container is uh, on on, um, on the head it's of flying someone. on top of someone, yeah. right? <laughs> you know that changes everything. Like yeah. it, uh, you know, didn't happen in this case, but it makes you think that it can happen, right? Yeah. And um, so you said that they they were lucky; it was just a ransomware attack. But I believe even the ransomware itself could technically cause some problems, uh, problems like that, right? If you, yeah. um, if the ransomware itself encrypts some systems that are required to control some machines, right? And you lose any, um, uh, any control. access to it, yeah. any control, still there could be some, some problems. Maybe I, I, th I think like there, there are also some uh, security systems then uh, that you know, basically, when you lose access, uh, make the machine uh, in a in a safe state, something that should not cause harm to anyone, mm -hmm. right? But it depends on the specific machine, it depends on uh, on the vendor that uh, developed the machine, and so on and so forth. Uh, so still, it's it's a possible scenario, right? Um, yeah. The other thing I'm thinking about. Because you mentioned that the, you know the pharmaceutical uh, industry. Still, um, let's say that, and probably that's the it, it's it's the case. Any of those ships starting from that port had to carry, uh, you know, pharmaceutics, right? Mm -hmm. Or had to carry some uh, something that could be I don't know food for some uh, country where it's really. Uh, very much needed. Okay. Yeah. So still, I think that even if physical machines are not impacted, human lives could be could be as well. Maybe uh, not oh, yeah. directly, but 
you know, it still could be a, a very, a very huge mess, <laughs> let's say, right? Yeah. It depends yeah, really yeah. On, on the type of good that you are transporting with the ships. And if this is that big as the news, uh, you know, say, I think, yeah, that's 10% of all, you know, total trade volume. I think that that, that includes also something else, not only the, uh, not only ships, right? Um, uh, yeah. yeah, the impact could be very, very big, right? Maybe it's not just about the cars. You you can stay without a car for for some time, and it's not a big problem. But maybe you cannot stay without, uh, you know, uh, uh, food or uh, uh, pharmaceuticals or any other, um, uh, you know, very important uh, items for for your life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, um... In, in this case, uh, the good news uh, is that uh, uh, the port uh, authority was able to recover in, uh, uh, if I did the right count, uh, in uh, uh, seven, uh, 62 hours, so less than three days. Yeah, which is... Uh... Which still a lot, right? I don't know how many uh, shipments they they couldn't they could uh, send in three days. But, oh, I don't you know, know but <laughs> overall, <laughs> uh, it's not a, a good recovery time, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> if you are complete, if you are completely uh, helped by the the ransomware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like. I don't really know. The point is that many organizations actually cannot recover at all, right? Because when you are right. hit by a, uh, a ransom uh, malware like this, the point is either you have a backup of all the files or and all the systems, and you can just restore the system as at the state they were before the attack, right? And uh, but that's not enough because other than restoring. You should make sure that the attacker cannot just redeploy the, the ransomware from uh, from scratch. So still, yeah. we need that post uh, post mortem investigation that we were talking about uh, earlier, uh, and uh, blocking the the uh, the initial attack vector. Um, or they actually need a way to uh, decrypt the systems, right? So here and there we have um, also companies which are um, investigating the malware itself if they have access to it, doing some uh, um, you know, reverse engineering and uh, malware analysis to find out if there's a, uh, like a, a bug in the malware itself that let um, the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the security analyst uh, to just uh, recover all the files without the decryption key. So it happened before, we have some uh, examples, uh, but of course it's not always possible. And also it requires some, uh, some time to analyze the malware and also maybe to, to uh, develop the new software which will recover the data. So uh, you, you definitely need you know, multiple hours to do that. Uh, yeah, but if, if, if they did it, you know, it's, it's already, um, uh, you know, a good point, right? Yeah. Uh, like, not not every company can uh, can do that, unfortunately. And uh, I think they were at least a little bit prepared for it, or just um, you know, uh, contacted some someone that helped them, uh, most likely. But yeah, uh, you know, um, just I really I really like. Uh, selecting one of those news from time to time because it helps, you know, reiterate on uh, how big is the cyberspace today. How important is uh, focusing on uh, try to prevent uh, data breaches, but also, you know, recover from data breaches, right? Uh, yeah. We are in the industry and we already know this, right? Because it's it's basically our work. It's what we do. Uh, every day, but uh, 
there are also people who I think um, are not um, uh, really considering this as a, as a very big uh, big problem, right? But you know, uh, reading, reading the, like not not only reading this news uh, as a security analyst, but you know, uh, sharing this news with the overall public, I think it helps spread some uh, some awareness on, the, on this kind of topics. Yeah, even because uh, uh, the cost to be prepared to um, fight against uh, this type of attack is uh, not so high compared to the damage that a ransomware attack can cause. So. Uh, it's only uh, it's only a matter uh, to be prepared to uh, manage this type of incident. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and uh, that's uh, yeah, and another um, another interesting point on this uh, on this news. Uh, I don't know if it is uh, connected or not, uh, but seems uh, that uh, ten months before this uh, this attack. Uh, uh the port uh, infrastructure was uh hit by a ddos claimed mm -hmm. by the russian killnet just right. to remain connected to the previous one so <laughs> the, yeah, when, yeah. when i when i read this uh i, I found it uh, it in interesting yeah <laughs> again yeah uh, well Recently, we had, we had like, um, well, not only recently, but uh, Russian groups are always on the news, right? And uh, yeah. they are probably the most active ones in the wild and um, probably also the most uh, tracked ones because, uh, I don't know, I feel like there are uh, some countries uh, where companies have less interested less interested in tracking down uh, uh, connected uh, uh, threat groups while tracking down some someone from Russia it's uh, it's very fancy nowadays okay so every every big security firm uh, here and there publish a, a report on a Russian group right because uh, it's like a way to uh, I don't know how to say this um, reaffirm your your knowledge and skill like I, I can track down a russian group which i which is a big thing so it's very it's much more common to see a russian group mentioned in a news than any other group or at least that's my perception i know i don't know what you, yeah. you think about this <laughs> yeah there are they are doing a, a lot of uh, a lot of noise <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. period, uh, uh, the Russian groups, but uh, uh, Russian will uh, is, is always uh, in, uh, in in the first uh, positions uh, uh, in terms of uh, attacks uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, in, in these last uh, years and a half. Uh, then they have already also um, acquired some other uh, interesting positions <laughs> on the <laughs> on their uh, on the on the, on the top ten. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like like it's um some sort of competition between uh, within groups, which I think there is just a little bit on who is the most capable or who uh, breaches oh, yes. more the, companies. The, this is sure. Right? <laughs> 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 but this is because uh, it, it, the, the, the human uh, are, are made this way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah some right. Competition for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The power yeah, is, one so. of, uh, is one of the first uh, topic. Yeah. Power, yeah, money. That's for sure. That, that is both uh, <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's kind involved. of uh, comparable yeah yeah, yeah. That, that that is both involved uh, in all these type of attacks uh, power money uh, yeah yeah Who is the boss 
<laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. So I think that's that's gonna be all also for this news. Um, that yeah. yeah, it was pretty interesting. But we have uh, other stuff that could be juicy as well. So the third one, the, thir the yeah. third news for today talks about um, um, solar panels, right? So mm. um, <laughs> um, th this is uh, like I read uh, different news from different websites on the, on the kind of the same topic, right, this week. But the point yeah. is that um, uh, there's a specific company like, okay, Cybol which uh, during a research found out that there are a lot, right? Really a lot of, um, uh, you know, dashboards for solar panels, which are publicly exposed uh, on the internet. Uh, the title says uh, more than um, 130,000, um, you know, systems that can be, easily uh, be accessed and found online. I think they usually they use something like uh, Shodan, right? It is a um, search engine uh, to find uh, exposed systems or vulnerable systems and so on and so forth. And um, they collected a list of different systems from uh, different uh, vendors. We can see a, a list here, uh, but you know there are, there are actually many. Um, and um, so there are, I think there are different um, ways to, to read this, this news, right? The only fact that the systems are exposed online could or could not be concerning, in my opinion, right? Because I think mm -hmm. that for most of those, it's actually required to be pub publicly exposed, maybe because uh, uh, the vendors need to remotely access them um for uh, i don't know troubleshooting to to monitoring or uh anything like that but the point is that how they are exposed okay uh, which features mm -hmm. they are exposing uh are there any um um authentication meters to get access to the system itself or it's actually you know you, you reach out to the to the ip address and uh, you already have access to uh, all of the features from the system or whether uh, even if there's an authentication system, uh, still some data are uh, open uh, in, uh, in the dashboard, right? So they can be um, scraped, right? So basically someone can uh, automatically uh, collect data from all of those systems and uh, use them, you know, uh, um, to... to um, uh, to send, you know, uh, other other attacks and other uh, scams and and uh, and uh, and everything. Uh, so uh, I think it's a it's a very long uh, discussion. This is like solar panels are not the only systems that are exposed online. We heard about uh, security cameras in the past a lot, uh, or yeah. uh, other IoT systems in general. Uh, I don't know, like uh, smart fridges or a smart uh, whatever, right? Um, but this is yes, pretty interesting in because... In general, uh, in general, uh, it, everything that is uh, exposed to internet uh, uh, could be attacked. I mean, uh, uh, we are saying, uh, we are talking about uh, the, the solar panel right now, but... Uh, uh, not so many years ago, uh, we were uh, talking about uh, the WannaCry uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> was uh, uh, exploited by, uh, uh, by attacking uh, the SMB port uh, 445 uh, on, uh, exposed on internet. That uh, is, is one of the first things that, that you have to close. <laughs> Right. I mean, so yeah, I think this is just a little different in the fact that you know, in that case, you uh, you had you know, uh, big companies exposing their internal systems, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, any kind of server or Windows computer in general, and that's uh, that's bad, of course, right? But you have 
someone who take care of those systems that should know that those should not be exposed. That should take Let, care. <laughs> yeah, I, I say I say should, right? Ah, okay, I okay. Say should. I miss it. <laughs> uh, but you know, solar solar panels like this could be just the solar panels that private people have on their houses, and uh, that yep. some random company just installed on uh, on your house, and maybe you're not even aware of it, right? And even if you are aware of it, you know. It's not like any uh, any citizen now has the uh, knowledge and uh, skills to understand, okay, now this is uh, a potential uh, issue from the network of my house, right? Yeah. I think this is the, 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 the real difference here. Well, it could still be big solar panels in uh, big companies. So technically, we are in the same uh, uh, situation where you are just adding a new system to the uh, overall company network, and you should treat you know that as a you know all of the other system that has to be secured as well as a, as a responsible uh, for the for the company network. But it depends really on where those uh, solar panels are installed. Um, and uh, you know in this case, like. We we asked uh, we we were asking this question in one of the previous episodes, but the point is that who is really responsible to secure those systems? So he is the person who buy the the solar panels, or he is uh, the the vendor who uh, you know develop those solar panels and sell them, right? He is maybe the technician who install it that maybe is from uh, from another company. It's it's a very it's you know it's an interesting topic I think, and of course as <laughs> all the interesting topics is also uh, pretty difficult to find uh, to find an answer. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I mean for sure the vendor uh, of the panel uh, must have a responsibility in this uh, mm -hmm. because if you think that. Uh, a panel uh, lives for almost uh, 20 years. Right. You, you have to guarantee your, your customers that uh, your device uh, are safe for 20 years. Exactly. In, this in, all, in all aspects, right? Yeah, yeah. This means uh, also uh, maintaining uh, the, soft, the control software that you sell with your products. Exactly. And this is exactly the same, uh, the same problem that uh, we have uh, with the, all the IoT vendors. That is exactly. not so simple to have, a, to have a company that is able to guarantee um, a maintenance for 20 years. But well, even it, before it, that, yeah. like, because I think there are two levels here. No, one thing is uh, maintaining the software and make it secure during the time. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, delivering uh, updates and yeah. patches and fixes, right? But even before that, the point is that was the software uh, like uh, being securely developed from, from, uh, from the beginning was... Was there any security by design, right? Yeah. So, uh -huh. the, the, like, like the problem is, if there's no authentication in front of the system itself, it's not because yeah. of maintenance or lack of maintenance. It's it's because when you developed it the first time, you never thought that maybe it's a good idea that you know just someone who who is uh, you know specifically permitted to access it should yeah. access it. So I think, you know. Uh, there are there are two levels of problems. Of course, you know, this is a little worse than maybe a smart fridge or a smart uh, yeah. anyway, because as you said, you will have this on your on your house or on your uh, you know um, uh, place for a long time. So definitely maintain it. It's it's a good it's a it's a big topic. But first of all, you know, uh, if I if I put a new system in my network. Uh, that should be just the very, you know, the very basic 
um, elements of security should be there. There's another uh, another question coming to my mind uh, right now, and and it is, uh, but why do I have to connect uh, my solar panel to the network? Because what's the purpose of having it connected? <laughs> What plus gives uh, this connection uh, to uh my mm, solar pa uh, solar panel uh, systems it, it's only a matter of monitoring it uh, monitoring its performance and so on or there's something else because otherwise uh, 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 if it is only a matter of showing uh, to your friend uh, Hmm. How how smart you are that uh, you are that you have a solar panel connected that is pro producing uh, 10 gigabyte the 10 gigawatts uh, of uh, energy right now and so on. I mean, probably uh, you you can think not to connect it to your network. Yeah. You think, right? So the the first for probably the very first question is why I. I have to connect it uh, to my network, <laughs> like the fridge. I mean, you know what you have <laughs> into the fridge. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> or or yeah, the well, t-shirt or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, uh, the point is that, so I, I agree with you, right? I really don't like IoT in general or even domotics and, uh, and everything because I just feel I, I, I don't need it. But at the same time, I don't want to be the guy that says, uh, you know, uh, um, just because there's risk, we shouldn't like like have any any new stuff, because we are, no, no, as you said before, me neither, uh, Giorgio. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. It's I was only uh, asking myself this uh, this question. I mean, uh, I can understand if you want to connect, uh, for example. Um, the uh, oh, madon, <laughs> wait a second. I don't know, there, there's like lights or temperature uh, controlling yeah, systems, the, or... um, the, the boiler, all right, for, uh, yeah, 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 to, um, to make your house yeah. hot in the, <laughs> in the winter. So in this right. case, I mean, if this is a second house uh, uh, and you would like to go there for a weekend, uh, then probably uh, it's okay for me to, to have it uh, in some way connected. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, with the GSM uh, network or something similar. But in other cases, uh, uh, Yeah, we have to think uh, what the what's the benefit of having something connected. Only only yeah, saying this yeah. um, at home uh, because uh, this type of uh, data in um, in an enterprise uh, should be could be very interesting. Uh, Uh, in terms of uh, business uh, and so on. Yeah, also to yeah. just uh, you know monitor costs for the company maybe and uh, and yeah. everything. For, so for example. Yeah. So you you're completely right. I agree with you totally. I just think that in this specific case, it it is mostly for uh, you know maintenance. So if the if I don't know the vendor or whoever is actually taking care of the solar panel uh, can actually address outages uh, in, a, in a timely manner because it's continuously uh, monitoring them. I think, you know, uh, the, the money that you are saving just be, be, uh, with, the, with that kind of service will, could justify the fact that they are connected to the internet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I can see in this specific case uh, the reason why. Uh, but still, this you know the fact that it makes you save money, or it makes you uh, better deliver a service to to your customer or or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should also uh, in a in an ideal world, uh, 
make you think, okay, maybe I can also invest some more time or some more efforts in uh, making, making it more secure. Because my, ser my service to, to my customer will also be impacted if anyone you know, uh, compromise the systems. Right? It's not just the customer who is uh, um, having problems and issues from an attack to this system. It's also you as a service provider who cannot connect anymore, who cannot control anymore. You cannot you know, uh, 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 you know, just provide your service anymore. Yeah. So, so, so that's what I, I'm thinking about, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, for the for the maintenance part, uh, I see a problem uh, in terms that uh, mm, probably uh, it, it's not the vendor to uh, install. Uh, there's uh, this panel, this system mm -hmm. uh, on the roof uh, of a house. Uh, it's someone else. Uh, it's and like it's a system party. Yeah, it's like a system integrator in the um, in the um, in the industry information industry. So mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, like vendor, you can uh, uh, even produce uh, firmware updates. Uh, uh, firmware patches and and so on, but then uh, you have uh, to um, you have uh, a customer that understand the importance of uh, keeping the software up to date, the firmware up to date, and uh, this customer should for sure sign. Um, a support contract with this third mm. party. So, uh, and this is typically something that uh, at home you uh, are not uh, ready to do, mm -hmm. except uh, for uh, the boiler, for example, because uh, <laughs> because there's someone that that is con that controls uh, that your boiler is uh, working as expected. Okay, right. So, th this could be a problem. And uh, coming back to uh, a phrase that you said uh, some minutes ago, uh, always on this, uh, I read somewhere that <laughs> um, related to the security by design development uh, and so on. I read that uh, uh, this panel. Uh, was affected by unauthenticated remote command injection or unauthenticated remote command execution. So probably <laughs> the worst that the worst type of uh, of bugs that you can have in an application. <laughs> so, so wait, wait, wait. Let, let's let's try to understand better what we're, what we are saying here, right? Which is yeah. very, very, very interesting. So uh, until now, we just say that you know. The fact that the system is exposed in general, it's already a bad thing. Okay, no, no matter how, how how is actually developed or configured the system, because mm -hmm. uh, you know again you can uh, uh, scrape data, you can access it if there is no authentication and so on and so forth. So it's yeah. already uh, bad as it is. The, yeah, uh, but uh, we have to remember that without this type of exposure uh, done with all the uh, the right configurations, uh, right controls, and so on. But without uh, this type of exposure, internet uh, uh, will uh, will not exist. Yeah, <laughs> because, oh, of course, uh, right? Because a server is, is a computer exposed on uh, uh, internet accepting on a network. requests. Yeah, accepting requests uh, by a customer. So this is uh, uh, another. Um, Another way to to see um, this exposure, I mean, you can expose something, but you have to be sure that uh, it it is protected, exposed, exactly. but protected. Exactly. Sorry for so uh, interrupting let, let, you. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that's uh, that's perfect. Uh, you're right, and let's say that I will summarize saying that it's accept acceptable under. Uh, some conditions, right? You need yeah. it, 
uh, it could be useful for for some reasons and you expose with uh, with some limits and some uh, uh, constraints right but the point is that even when you let's say that again there are many vendors uh, for for these uh, sonar partners maybe some of these systems are actually pretty secure or you know decently secure let's say but we know like we in this industry that even when you do all the uh, all the steps to make a network or a system secure, it, you know it can always be that uh, someone finds a, a, a vulnerability. So basically, you know, uh, a bug in the software that lets you use the software in a, 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 in an unpredicted way. Okay, and uh, this is the case that you were describing before. So it's actually uh, quoted on the on the news right here. I'm, I'm highlighting uh, the, um, the vulnerability for uh, some solar views, specifically um, um, solar panels. And, uh, you know, you were mentioning, I think, uh, unauthenticated remote, uh, remote command execution, right? Yeah. This means basically and, that... And there are other, uh, other vulnerabilities tracked uh, under different CV numbers uh, that okay. are remote code execution. Uh, if you want, I should have uh, the article somewhere in my notes. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So we can we can maybe share it mm -hmm. uh, if anyone wants to to uh, um, you know to, to double check the news. Uh, also, because I, I'll just take the chance to reminder that we are having our chat uh, on the on the news, but we always encourage you to directly have a read of those and uh, make your own opinion. And uh, maybe there's. Uh, there's something else that we didn't really focus on, uh, so take your time to to read your own news and uh, maybe give us give us your 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 opinion, uh, uh, you know, in the comments during the the live or e even uh, uh, during the the YouTube stream. Uh, uh, again, as a, as a comment, I will actually uh, leave all of the links for the news we're uh, talking about in the description of uh, the YouTube video. So feel free to to have a look at that. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, but returning to the to the news here, uh, we mentioned the um, you know the type of vulnerability, so remote command execution, and I just wanted to to briefly describe what uh, what it is. Um, so uh, it's probably one of the worst one, right, or the worst categories of vulnerability that uh, we can have, and it's basically saying that. Uh, you can access a system remotely, okay? So uh, not being physically uh, in front of the system, and you can also send any kind of uh, um, uh, of command or uh, uh, just arbitrary code, right? Usually to the to the system, so that uh, you can basically make the system do anything you want. Uh, as yeah. also something that is unexpected that was not really. Um, the system was not designed to do at the very beginning, right? Uh, so it's the worst uh, type of uh, vulnerability there and uh, will permit an attacker to have full control of the system. And, um, you know, I think the, the case that is actually mentioned here in the news is that uh, um, the Mirai botnet, so basically a network of compromised devices that are used by attackers to run uh, um, big scale attacks, um, was using some of those uh, solar panels to run uh, DDoS attacks, right? So yeah. let's say that the attacker Giorgio, yeah. just to uh, just behind, uh, just after the um, the screenshot uh, uh, that you see there, there's also mm -hmm. the remote code execution. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly yeah, you can there. see that. You know the, the the first paragraph the paragraph after the the screenshot the bull check report You're right. the blah 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 yeah yes 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 you can see that in the news it is specified that there are uh, you know multiple vulnerabilities affecting uh, the same systems and as I mentioned before uh, <laughs> you know uh, there's the uh, the showdown <laughs> screenshot right uh, probably. So, 
you probably the best advice here is to choose a different uh, vendor uh, instead of solar view <laughs> just in case well, I... you, you would like we... to <laughs> well we, we but... didn't check all, all of the others right so maybe yeah, yeah, exactly I, you don't know if solar view is actually the best one here <laughs> Oops. That, that could let's be hope also. Not. <laughs> that could be <laughs> so let's hope not but definitely you know uh, Two different vulnerabilities of this kind is uh, is not uh, uh, the best way how to start, you know, uh, <laughs> when, when thinking uh, about buying uh, solar panels. Yeah. Uh, but you never know, right? If you're not in the industry, this is not the first thing you think about when uh, when you need this. Uh, yeah. Uh, in another in another post, uh, uh, I, I found another interesting. Uh, um, detail uh, mm -hmm. that seems that uh, um, the command injection was uh, present since version 4 of the software, control software, that uh, is late uh, 2016, October 2016. Nice so, one. <laughs> uh, it, it's seven years almost. <laughs> well, we were talking about maintenance, right? So yeah, th that's yeah, exactly, exactly what we were referring to. So if there is so, a problem like that, you probably, need to fix it. Yeah, probably <laughs> the two DDoS attack uh, that uh, we mentioned uh, in, for the previous two news uh, was uh, conducted also with the help of this <laughs> solar panel. <laughs> it, it could be. It definitely could be. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, together. They were probably part of it, um, so yeah. You know what? I think I think that's a wrap also for this news because we have another big one, uh, which is the last one for this uh, uh, for this episode. Which I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the last news usually makes the name for the episode. The name for this episode is uh, "The Devil Is in Your Most Trusted Tool," right? Uh, and uh, nice. and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you very much. Uh, basically, you know, um, the news here talks about um, uh, Win SCP, which is a very, very famous uh, tool that uh, you know, system administrators or uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, IT technicians are using every day in uh, so many companies and organizations. Uh, that basically enables you uh, to remotely connect uh, with a list of uh, different protocols. So FTP, SFTP, uh, SCP, and so on and so forth. So it's a very common Windows client to do remote uh, connections and the remote sharing of files between different systems. Yeah. So this is, I believe, a free software, right? So this is something that anyone can actually... Uh, just search on Google and uh, open the site and download, download from internet. Um, uh, the, the, you know, what's the problem with this? The problem was that it's not about the software itself. It's uh, about a specific chat group. Again, this, this time uh, the Black Cat uh, group, uh, which I think did a, a very, uh, very tricky thing here. So I will describe it and then we can return to all of the aspects. So they created, they, they run a malvertising campaign, which is already something interesting to talk about, um, to, to make people think that, uh, you know, there was another site from, from which you could download the software. But from this new site they created, you were actually downloading a, a malware that was uh, disguised as uh, the software itself. Sorry, it, right. do you want the, um, uh, some interruption uh, in the middle you of... Can, uh... You can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, because You're, you're because, the guest. Because the, the first th thing that drives me crazy is that uh, 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 regarding to the malvertising is that uh, the malicious result was promoted by Bing and Google in their uh, results page. So it means that someone pay Google and Bing to have uh, 
its own link uh, being displayed before the right one. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think this, this is, is something that, that, that really drives me <laughs> crazy because, because I mean, it's, it's impossible <laughs> today have this type of things happen. It's impossible. Yeah. I think this, this is really mind blowing because, you know, uh, the point is okay, usually, uh, you know, most people uh, think that if I'm searching for something on Google, uh, until I, uh, I stop at the first results, I should be safe because Google is actually controlling, you know, the sites that is proposing to me. So, uh, or at least again, it should. <laughs> <laughs> and if you uh, pay, they so... show you whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll be there I'll be there in a second so basically you know most of the time most of the time you you um, you know you feel safe when you uh, just click on one of the first results Google being or whatever search engine you you prefer to use right the point here is that uh, Google is also accepting uh, advertisement meaning that anyone can actually pay Google or Bing or anyone else uh, to basically display your result before all of the others. Okay, so if you are selling, if you're selling a product, if you're selling a service, and uh, you want your service to be displayed as first um, when uh, someone searches for your type of service, you can just pay the search engine, and uh, they will display you at, at first. They will also say it is advertisement, right? So technically you are able to uh, you know, differentiate between the normal results and the advertisements. But the point is that it will be the first one. So if you don't look at that you know, label saying advertisement, you will just click on that. And I think probably most of the people do that. Now, the very mind blowing thing is that this time the threat group, so the attackers are paying Bing and Google, right? To display their, uh, you know, malicious website uh, first, right? So At the very top of the results. Exactly. We, the the great. thing that you you trust by default because it's the first result, so it should be trustworthy by default. Um, and uh, so basically, let's say that uh, a system administrator is. Uh, looking for uh, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, trustworthy tool that they use so many times, they need just to download it again on a new system. Uh, they search on Google WinSCP. They know usually bang it's so common, it's gonna be the first result. So they don't really check. They just click on the first result. And then a new website opens, you see the download button and just click on it without thinking about it because you did this so many times before. Right. I think, again, it's not for the fault uh, for the system administrator. So anyone can can fall on it. I will fall on it potentially. I don't know. I don't know what you, what you what you think. No, no. I, I would just would like to uh, to say that uh, the malicious link uh, um, was uh, a type of squatting. Uh, domains link uh, of WinSCP. So means that, uh, uh, for example, instead of having uh, only two S in the name uh, of, mm -hmm. the, of the domain name, uh, the, the malicious link has three S, for example. Yeah. Or uh, for Italian domains, uh, one typical type of squatting is to substitute uh, the the i of dot it with an l so yes. uh, the the type of squatting domain uh, uh, be dot lt that uh, when you look uh, in the browser uh, url bar the l is is very similar to the i so yeah yeah you don't notice it right but from from the mm, from the mal uh, malversing uh, results uh, on uh, begins the um, um, default of the man 
because uh, the sysadmin in this case or, 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 or anyway the man uh, was not able to recognize a type of squatting domain and then there are other uh, signs uh, that should be noticed in the attack path uh, that, that probably you you arrive to them uh, in, in a couple of seconds I mean yeah yeah so I'm I'm always uh, a little um... You know, uh, <clears throat> like all of these tactics and techniques, right? Uh, using the advertisement, using type of squatting, so basically misspelling the uh, the right user, uh, not username, but uh, URL. Domain right? name. Yeah, for the website, are all addressing human vulnerabilities, right? Yeah. Are all addressing biases. So, of course, you know, you could be a little more um paying attention on what you are clicking on but there are also moments also in your working life when uh, you are just you know your attention is just low let's say that you are uh in a rush to to do something to to do some task at work or someone is really pressing you to do something like i really feel like anyone right even security professional at some point in a, in a specific situation can fall for something uh, that is uh, very well done. Like in this case. Yeah, yeah. Right? absolutely. Because maybe if I see pers personally, you know, I talk for myself, um, maybe the, the malvertising campaign called, uh, um, um, you know, uh, could be enough for me. But when uh, I usually look at the URL, and if I see that the URL is totally different from the witness CP one, I will probably notice it. But if I have the two different layers, so first result from Google and also a domain that looks looks the same, right? If I don't really pay attention to it, uh, and the, the website, um, uh, you know, uh, aesthetically, it's exactly like the one, the the uh, the original yeah. one. It's very difficult. Okay, either you are always focusing on all of the different signs, right? Uh, it, at all time, no matter what's your current psychological status, or you can actually fall for something like this because I think this is pretty well uh, designed, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, so it's totally the fault of the, the person who clicks on it, but there are so many different layers of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, good design for, for the malicious campaign. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, so we have the, uh, the malvertising, we had the type of squatting, we had the site that is similar to the original one, but also when you actually download the, uh, the, uh, the file that you expect to, uh, to have to install the software on your computer, it's also, it's also mimicking the same files you download uh, from uh, the original uh, uh, from the original software. So you actually have a setup.exe, okay? That you are, I don't know how many times a system, administ a system administrator already clicked on, right? In uh, in his career, it just does that for the for the you know uh, the thousandth time, and uh, this time it's actually you know a malware. That eventually we will give attackers the the access to the system where you are installing the the software, right? Uh, so it's very very well designed, and uh, I really I'm really thinking at this point how many different organizations already fell for this kind of attack, and we don't know about it. I right? was lucky that they do not have attacked uh, the download of uh, Putty. Dot exe because uh, only this week I downloaded it probably ten times. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's it's exactly the same thing, right? It's uh, yeah, yeah, just absolutely. another tool absolutely. to do another remote kind of connection. Um, so so you know maybe we should check for uh, any any kind of advertising for Putty as well <laughs> because uh, that will surpri surprise up, uh, me now. 
to, to set up an attack like this uh, uh, on Putin. <laughs> yeah. If you have some some dollars to invest uh, in uh, in paying uh, Google advertisement, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, you know, again, it's uh, and and I think and I think we said this uh, before, but I I will not stop uh, repeating this. For attackers, this is just another business. Right, yeah, yeah. the fact that they are paying, they are paying uh, Bing or Google. It's basically an investment to make more money or just to gain uh, uh, to reach their goal, thanks to that. Right, which again makes me think a lot about this. It's not just a random guy somewhere uh, just doing this uh, for uh, um, you know just to, to have fun, maybe sometime, but it's not always the case. This is a very structured and well thought business that is considering all of the different variables, right? They are, I don't know how much you actually pay Google to do something like this, depending on how, how long I well, think I you know want to, um, to have your result in there. But it's, it's still a, a good investment, I think. And uh, that means that the goal is worth it. Right, the uh, the thing that they can achieve thanks to this, it's worth it to them. Right, how many companies they can actually compromise with an attack like this? How many data they can steal? How many ransomware they can deploy, or you know, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so Even it's... because in this case, uh, uh, the results of attack uh, is. Uh, um, um, open to the attackers uh, a thousand possibilities because uh, uh, if I remember well, uh, uh, this attack at the end will deploy Cobalt Strike uh, yes. on, the on the victim uh, uh, computer. So th this open to the attackers all the, all the possibilities that... Uh, having a, a computer um, the total control of a computer in uh, um, the target uh, networks with all uh, that this uh, means uh, uh, the attackers can uh, can exfiltrate uh, data from your network can uh, move literally to maintain access uh, can uh, um, try to install uh, botnets uh, on uh, internet facing uh, computers uh, can uh, use uh, your your computer like uh, um, a jump host uh, uh, to another uh, in the chain uh, of conducting another type of attacks uh, to cover the tracks uh, and and so on. there's a, a, a lot of possibilities uh, having cobalt strike uh, deployed on a on a target machine so uh, in some way, it, it's uh, a lot more dangerous than uh, um, the ransomware cases that we saw at the beginning uh, of our chat uh, this night. It could be. It could be. And, uh, you know, you're perfectly right. Like, what we are describing here, all the malvertising thing, is just the first foothold, right, in, yeah. the, uh, in the target organization. And uh, so you mentioned Cobalt Strike. Just to briefly describe that, um, I think if I'm not wrong, Cobalt Strike is actually like a how do they call it? Adversary simulation tool. So it's yeah, actually it, developed it's a by a yeah. It's a commercial tool you yeah. used to test uh, vulnerabilities uh, of a systems uh, like uh, the. Um, like an attacker um, will do, right? Will do, exactly, yeah. Yeah. The, the point is that this is also probably one of the most common tools used by attackers themselves because the tool was, uh, I don't know, leaked uh, uh, a number of times in the past. And uh, from, uh, from that time on, uh, you know, they, the attacker just using it because, you know, why not? If it, if it works... 
it's uh, it's good so <laughs> it works also very well <laughs> compared to other self written uh, software i mean <laughs> yeah so you have basically a uh, 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 um let's say uh, uh, uh corporate grade uh tool like this so very well designed very well developed that also give you a lot of possibilities because i think it's basically like a Swiss knife for uh, uh, for attackers. Like you can do command and control. You can lateral move. You can do a lot of stuff with just these uh, this, this software. Okay, it has a you know a list of different features that enables you to do whatever you want uh, with the compromise system. So this is uh, let's say the second step. They um, make the user download the first. Uh, um, uh, the first attack vector directly uh, from their websites. And uh, the next step is installing Cobra Strike so they can make, basically have full access of the system and, the, and do whatever they want, even jumping to other systems in the network, as you, as you mentioned before. So definitely, you know, uh, uh, the possibilities are very, very big, even considering that you have to multiply that for all the organization who will... Uh, uh, fall uh, on uh, onto this. I think the the worst thing for the attackers here is actually trying to understand, you know, uh, which company uh, address first, right? Because maybe <laughs> there are some very little companies. Maybe it's not really worth it. But then there's this big corporate who fall for this. Uh, so that takes a lot of time, <laughs> I think. Yes, ch choosing uh, between the, the preferred target. Yes, if you yeah. have a plethora of, uh, uh, of uh, targets uh, to choose uh, in, uh, then yeah. <laughs> yeah it's be... like being in a garden full of, uh, you know, I don't know, deers or boars to, to hunt for, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you, you have to decide which is the, big one, the biggest one that I should prioritize. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe I think they, they, they will also have, uh, like their way to, to find out, like, I don't know, just, uh, maybe running some, uh, DNS requests to find out about the domain for the company and then recognizing the yeah. company itself could be just one, just the first example that came to my mind. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I just, you know, I think that. Again, the possibilities after uh, the witness SCP thing are are so many, but still, uh, you know, the very unique thing about this attack is the mal the mal malvertising that uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I I never, I think I read about something like this before, but not um, so well designed like this one, right? Uh, yeah. Because it's taking into consideration a, a tool that is so famous, right, uh, and uh, and all of the um, attentions that they are putting into making it. So uh, in, my, in my working experience, uh, I saw the exact uh, same type of uh, malversing uh, uh, being used against uh, an Italian bank in the past. Exactly mm. the same. A crafted uh, malicious URL uh, was um, uh, advertised by Google at the first uh, okay. um, results in, in the in the results page, uh, searching for this bank, and this caused some uh, little problems uh, to the to the bank itself. <clears throat> but I, I uh, imagine, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, um, you were talking about uh, technological uh, uh, controls that uh, can be put in place uh, to prevent such uh, types uh, of attacks. Uh, but uh, um, I would like to recall again uh, our mind uh, to a concept uh, that is crucial in this. Uh, and uh, this concept is that uh, Internet is not uh, a safe place. <laughs> internet is not a safe place it's like uh, it's like the the real world there's a lot of people trying uh, uh, to make money in the worst uh, way possible Wait. and yeah yeah so 
you have uh, like exactly like in the real in the real time in the real life you have uh, always uh, to pay attention in what you are doing uh, on internet always always it doesn't matter if you hurry for something or not uh, you have always to be uh, to pay attention uh, in, in what uh, uh, the system is showing you uh, the results, uh, um, the lock screen uh, in HTTPS connection that can be broke uh, because uh, you are not uh, on the bank site uh, um, that you think uh, to be on. Uh, you have to pay attention to the how the domains is written. Uh, you have to, have to pay attention to everything because internet is not a safe place. Is not a safe place. <laughs> You know, I liked it so much that I think that's going to be the end of the episode. <laughs> that's, the perfect, that's just the perfect way to finish it. So, again, uh, for the, I don't know, many times now, thank you very much, Davide, for uh, you, you know, being here with me. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I hope that you, you had as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was, was fun. Uh, uh, if you want to invite me some other times, so I will be happy to join you again. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you just have to ask and, uh, and you will be provided. So that's perfect. Again, thank you very much. Thank you to, uh, you know, uh, anyone who is watching this or will watch this on YouTube. I'll just remind just uh, once again that um, we are live on Twitch, but... Um, the video will be re-uploaded on YouTube later this week, uh, and also the I will actually extrapolate the the audio and uh, publish that on uh, Spotify and other um, you know podcast platforms. So uh, feel free to have a look at those and uh, let us know if you have any feedbacks. And uh, yeah, thanks again, and I think good night to everyone will be the the very end of the episode. Bye bye. bye. Thank you again. Thank you.